Hello. Okay, so I am going to uh, I'm going to go on here and uh, wasn't planning on being on this evening. Um, change of plans, and so I will. Huh, hopefully, hopefully get to show uh, a few of the things that I've done and hopefully the sound is picking up okay. Um, I, uh, I'm i trying to make sure I get this right for once. And, um, you know, it, it's taken some time, you know, learning pains, growth. I, I think, I think, I think I finally have this whole double audio next to each other thing all squared away so that's good I think I finally oh have cool this whole perfect okay um the other thing i i i apologize for doing this while i'm you know here because i i normally like to just jump on in and, and get it going but um our broadcast premiere of spotlights is on sunday and i want to make sure <laughs> any of these little nuances of things that, that I need to still figure out. I, I plan on, I plan on having them figured out so that there's no hiccups or concerns or questions or ifs or ends or buts about it. Um, so I was, uh, what time is it? Oh yeah. Everyone's at dinner. And that's fine because, um, you know, I am going to uh, make another decision. I made a decision earlier this week to um, add color to these sketches and to the drawings I done. I did. I've been working on for the haikus. Um, I had um, I had eight haikus written and or yeah and so i went through them and i rounded it up and i wrote two more so um two of these i have um never published they're brand new haikus and they will uh be included in this wishing my heart i'm gonna go let me find them um Hey, that one should be right on top. And it's, oh, I, I know why. It's because I separated them out. Okay, so these are the ones I've drawn and sketched. So that list is not going to help me. Ooh, look, art. <laughs> um, I'm going to get to that in just a second. Okay, so here are the new ones. Let me see if the camera can pick these up. Oh, the best. Ooh, I know. This will work. I am going to fold them. Okay. So this is, ooh, look at that. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. So this is one of the, the newest haikus that I wrote. It's called Kiss My Heart Softly. Um, I, I hadn't even uh, remembered this part, but I went back and looked at um, my workshop uh, writing prompt thing about the haiku workshop, the thing I did, the assignment I did. And... Um, you don't really have to give a haiku a title, but a lot of uh, a lot of haikus have one word names, or uh, they do have titles. The title is usually somewhere in the haiku. Um, so mine, this one is called "Kiss My Heart Softly," with your delicious lips kiss while we plunge in deep. So that is my five seven five, and uh, I. I, I said this uh, in one of my other broadcasts. I get so paranoid because I, I had never wrote those before. I've never written haikus before. Um, it's part of a, a bunch of different things I'm going to be doing. Um, a sonnet is next on my my poem writing poetry lessons. So this is an this is not a new one. Hold on. This one is also not a new one. Okay, wait a minute. Did I write just two? Haha. <laughs> okay, I just wrote two. The other so there's four, there's four haikus left to 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 do the artwork for. 
which is why I was thinking for. Um, this is the other one. This one came to me actually from my broadcast on Monday. Um, when I was on, on Monday, I, you know, well, maybe you don't know. Um, if, if you didn't watch, you wouldn't know. Um, I had a complete meltdown and cried for over 30 minutes while I was live doing art. So this came from it. It came from some of the things I was saying. So new, I was, the haiku is called new. I was human. I might change the name to hurt me or something like that. Um, so it's new. I was human realized when the wicked hurt me that first time. This was a haiku I wrote on Monday. Well, I wrote this haiku actually two days ago or something like that, but it came to me to write it out of what I was sharing Monday night. I was sharing about surviving trauma, surviving um, abuse and human pain, actual physical pain was my first experience as a little girl in terms of knowing what it meant to even be human. Um, you know, when you're so young and you're, you know, super young, I think I was three, maybe four. I was very young the first time I suffered the hands of some serious trauma. So the pain, the pain, the pain of that hurt um, inspired this haiku. That was the day that I knew I was human. That was the day I knew I was human. And um, I have suffered the, at the hands of many since then. Lots of pain, physical pain, emotional pain, spiritual pain, you name it. Um, and so that haiku, along with uh, Kiss My Heart Softly, and the other ones, ha, ah, okay. So I have these 10 haikus, and they were, they were going to be in the book not, or this is not emotional burlesque, but I decided, I decided based on some suggestions I got, some feedback I got, some support, um, some really, in, uh, really supportive things that I have been, had shared with me from some people. And, and just in regards to my writing about my artwork, just a lot of different things. Let me try not to, uh, completely go crazy with um, <laughs> readjusting myself. Um, so basically it came down to this. I decided to pull the haikus out of that book. And, um, and this is the second time now, the second time now that I've been in the middle of finishing this book and I, and, and I'm okay with the, with the pause. I'm okay with the break and I'm okay with shifting gears because um, this is not emotional burlesque is it's touching on some in intensely personal deep stuff that I've never really shared before, at least not publicly, publicly. And so I decided to take the haikus out of it and, and do what had been suggested to me, which was create a kind of a graphic illustrated, um, I wouldn't per se say that it would be a comic book, but a graphic illustrated art book um, uh, of art in full, full fledged color form, the way that a comic book would, um, but with the, with the art and the poetry. And I did one um, and, and Pops Van Zandt is the one who suggested it. And um, I did one of the pieces, let me find her, uh, this one. She really is what, she is what changed my mind. She, this particular piece here, um, when I, I, I pulled her out, I, I did some adjusting. Um, I created a digital uh, publisher PDF uh, of, of her with the haiku. And it, it got me, it got me thinking and I'm like, you know, he's right. He's right. And so what I did is I decided to um, create these in a different way. So I'm going to do a series of haikus. Um, and I'm probably going to butcher this word, uh, desabel, desabel, I'm learning. Um, 
I'm studying uh, unofficially and unformally studying some French that I remembered from my childhood, but I'm going back and looking up some things that I liked, words that I loved when I was younger. Um, excuse me, deshabille, and I'm and again, I'm practicing, so don't judge me if I don't say it right. But anyway, in English, it means love undressed. And so it's going to be an illustrated haiku series. Um, the thing I love about the haikus is that until last year, I had one, I had never written one. Um, I, I took a very specific, very focused approach to learning how to write one. Um, I can today, like I can say, okay, let me write a haiku. <laughs> But that could, that was, that would, no, that would not have happened like that last year when I started the process. You'd be amazed. I was amazed at how difficult it was to get and convey the the concept or get convey what I was trying to get at and do the five, seven, five. That was kind of crazy. So, so that's part of why I came on live uh, this evening, uh, changing plans. I wasn't supposed to be on. Um, the other part was, uh, you know, for those, anyone out there who might be following me um, or would find this to follow me, or if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, you guys can, you know, you can watch this back. Um, so I have four left to do. Um, each volume in the series is going to have 10 haikus and it may not sound like a lot because 10 is just 10 it's you know why only 10 well part of it is because um i like that number the other part of it is that um tomorrow is celebrating a rebirth date for me of 10 years um in an entirely new world 10 years of recovery um, even longer if you count some other recovery aspects of, that I have been working on in my life. Um, so out of those 10, sweet girl, she's done. She's ready. She is, uh, you know, I can't imagine anything else doing. I can't imagine doing anything else to her before I'm done. But I, you know, I've been known to change my mind. Um, this one, I, I showed him quickly, actually last night, I, I, when I was on last night, I outlined him with just black. So, um, you know, I did have someone watching me. So whoever that person was last night got to see me outline it. So I get offline. I took a picture of it because I do have the black outlined one that I am going to probably use to create a logo. I'm probably going to use to create a logo. And then I came back to it and did some more childlike wonderment coloring. Um, that was the other thing I, I think I'm going to incorporate into the haiku series is specifically um, using methods of art that are more freeing and, and more loving and more wondrous and more childlike and more, and, and, and do the art in a way that, um, as I go through the series and share it with others, share it with other creators out there, share it with other people who want to get into something artistic, but feel like they can't because, you know, maybe, you know, as I was talking about last night, that so many people let judgment keep them from doing stuff. So, um, I'm, my, I'll probably incorporate that and keep that. This one, I, I love, love, love. I can't say enough about how much I love it. I got to use my stenciling. Um, I, was, I didn't do this part live, mostly because, um, you know, and I, I this, all, this, this whole thing, well, this isn't so new. Like, I've done stuff like this before, um, but I hadn't done this experience this every experience is different but this one has been very different for me so that's the second one he he goes with a piece you know that's a good idea no no it's okay okay so he goes with one, another one of the haikus then i have a haiku uh this is the one <laughs> let me try to 
put it to where it can get the proper reverence because this piece, this is the piece that I was doing on Monday night. Um, it, it, it was, I think it was in blue and I was adding pencil and, uh, this particular haiku, even though I wrote it, I wrote it, I want it during, I wrote it last year. Um, when I was doing this particular drawing, the particular sketch, uh, what came out of me now is about current day and current emotion. And, and, and this haiku that goes with this is, um, it's called wishing my heart. And, um, I want to share it because of the significance that it had to me. Um, it is called wishing my heart could wishing my heart could feel into his world of waves far away from mine. And it was written, um, it was written to honor, a, a friend who I no longer speak to, or I should say he no longer speaks to me. Um, he's on the East Coast. He doesn't live here. And that was who the poem was originally written for. That's who the haiku was really originally written about. Um, and of course, you know, Monday night I was doing this and drawing it and a whole bunch of other emotions came out. So the painting or the, well, can't really call it a painting. I didn't paint this. I mean, unless you want to count my marker coloring as paint. Um, I have been known to take a piece like this of mine on paper and then come back to it with paint. Um, so that's this one. This one will go with that particular haiku. And then, okay, let me go back to the folder. So the other ones I have in here, um, Oh, good. We're good on timing. So I, I, I mapped this out just to, I should have just enough time to do, show you what I have done and then do the piece I'm going to color. Um, and then I have this one. This one came out exactly how I had hoped when I was doing the digital manipulations of it. It's very, very cool. Um, that one goes with a poem about children and laughing. This was uh, is yesterday I went live on Instagram for the first time ever <laughs> um, and, and did the some of the coloring in this. Um, it's really cool because in the camera, this, where is it? This one, no, let me go, wait. The, <laughs> that is pink actually, but it, it looks white, it's funny. Um, What's really cool about some of the stuff I'm doing in with the digital is I'm learning like certain colors. I, I can change certain colors. I can take out some color, which is cool. Um, that's one of the reasons why I decided to go ahead and do some colors on these um, because I am taking pictures of everything before I'm done. So that, so there you go. So those are, those are the finished pieces that I have five of them. I do have one more <laughs> and she is ready for me to add color. Um, I got her sketched. She actually, I love this part. She, where did she go? <laughs> I just had her out. She, okay. So I sketched this little girl um, four or five times by now, I think. Yeah, there she is. Okay. So I have sketched her so many times. I had, uh, one where I ruined the ear and then I had another one where, um, I converted it and turned it into a whole different view. Um, I'm going to leave it in the other format for the knob for the actual poetry collection. I'm going to leave it in the poetry collection. Where did it go? This is the, the other sketch of her. So she, she is going to go into, um, 
this is not emotional burlesque. And so since I still had this sketch of this one, um, which was one that I, I, I didn't technically ruin her, but I wasn't going to use her. I, I had done a bow and I hadn't given her a crown and I, I was all over the place with what to do or what not to do. And so I had decided not to do anything. And then I, and then now, now I have her at this point where she's, this is the one I'm going to use in the haiku. So the, the crown is got to be purple um, because we're lavender, purple, whatever the, the haiku this goes with talks about jewels of God's great. It's, it's wearing a crown of, you know, it's basically about being God's daughter and having his crown, uh, adorned in lavender and lavender is a, is a color that I specifically used in the haiku more because it's a, it's a color of sobriety as opposed to anything religious. I really don't, it's not about religion. Um, so I, I do know the one thing I'm probably going to need to do, and I'll probably get up to go do that, but I, I think, oh yeah, definitely going to use some of that. That is the metallic pen I used on my globe to make my Arctic and my Antarctic actually shine which is very cool. Here's a green. I might, I don't know if I'll use a green. I don't know if there's any reason to use a green. So yeah. Um, and then these are some other colors. Oh, yeah. So here we go. We'll see what happens. We'll see what comes out of me. I go, I go all over the place and I, you know, I, I, I know that so, ooh, let's give her some jewels in her crown first. I would say maybe she's wearing a big emerald. Or maybe just the middle is emerald. Uh, you know, again, it doesn't have to be exact. I don't know. I'm going to use what I grab next to me. That's that's what's going to happen. That is what's going to happen. Ooh, we know what we're going to use for the hearts, right? Haha. <laughs> of course. Of course, we're going to use red. Some ruby red rubies in here. Come on. Let's see what this looks like. Oh yeah, I like that. I like that. So I was working down again in Old Town today. Um, remembering what that's like, the whole commuting thing, back and forth, traffic, commuting, being in an office, um, it was all good. It was all fine. The only thing that bugged me, same thing as when I actually worked down at the office, is that, you know, um, it's an air-conditioned building, and I'm really susceptible to cold, and um, I get it. I get it. Everybody else wants, everybody else is like boiling, burning up on fire, and they, they're, they're like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. It's so hot. And then I'm sitting there just ready to like explode because everything is so freaking cold to me. Everything is so cold to me. Um, and my desk is right under a vent and we've had, every, we've had our building maintenance people try to turn down my thing, try to reset it to where my area doesn't get any, get any whatever. And you know, the, the fact of the matter is, is that the only way I'm going to be comfortable at that office is with seriously thick clothing on, like a lot of seriously thick clothing. And um, I basically, I basically end up wearing my outdoor hoodie and stuff sitting at a desk in an office just because I'm going to use red here and here. So 
her crown is intended to be um, like a wire metal kind of thing, which was what was I was thinking when I was doing it. And so we are going to see how we're going to, maybe I'm, e I'm going to either, I think I'm going to end up coloring on the insides of everything or just like little details of it. I haven't decided. It'll decide for me. I'm going to do a few areas with color and then I'll take a moment and stand. Well, I won't stand. Um, I made a pot of tea. I don't know why I'm saying this out loud, but I am. Um, because I end up making a pot of tea and most of the time I end up just, you know, drinking cold tea because I sit here and do what I'm doing and I forget that I had made a pot of tea and then I go to get some and it's gone off, you know. Because God forbid, God forbid I remember to drink my tea. Um, so, so yeah. <sighs> I didn't get, I don't have my, my one viewer. My one viewer is not here tonight with me. I'm sad. I'm sad. Yeah. <sighs> It's been an interesting week. Interesting um, changes coming up. Um, I may be going back to work at the office in person. I don't know. Um, we'll find out. We will find out. Um, I kind of like, it kind of excites me because I'm kind of over this isolation here at the house, but I don't have the greatest car. And so that the idea of having to drive down there with that car and put more miles on it doesn't sit well with me only because I worry that it's, you know, I worry that it's not going to build a, it's not going to manage it. It's not going to handle it. So we'll, you'll we'll see. Um, my boss made it sound like it was going to be my choice. And so that would be cool. That would be super cool. That would be cool. Um, oh my God. I was looking at my hair. So yeah, if you, if you, if you're watching this later um, in playback, <laughs> you check out my hair. This is what it looks like before I iron it. Um, after it's been washed and it dries on its own. One big wiry head of straw. Okay. So. I don't think I'm going to add any color to her hair. I think I'm going to leave her hair just like that. Maybe not. Maybe not. I, yeah, ooh, I got an idea. Okay. This is one of those things where, like, even if I had a brown marker, I probably wouldn't use it. But the thing I know about orange, especially when I get to the part on the computer, it's going to be just fine for what I want it to look like. This has been kind of cool. It's almost like, um, you know, I went from, you know, I'm this painter, right? I paint. That's me. Um, and then I get into this project where I'm going to do these sketched pieces. And then the sketch pieces bring me over to the digital world. And then the digital world gets me to a place where I, I'm like, you know, this, I, I, I don't like any of this. And so, so then it brings me back to some ideas of, you know, some old things, some of the ways I used to do stuff when I was younger, when I was not a painter on canvas, that kind of thing. And I'm like, Oh, I'll just do this. And so it's kind of been cool because 
it's almost like this break, like an in, not intellectual break, but it's like a creative break from the norm of, of what I normally do in the normal way that I do it. It's, it's, um, it's not like being on vacation, <laughs> but it's, um, it's kind of like this relief, this relief of, of, you know, and then of course I was getting like super excited by it because as I mentioned yesterday, I get super easily bored and I don't like being bored. I, I'm being bored is not good for me. And, and so anytime I can find some new way to, to get creative in some way, I get super excited and I did, I got super excited. Okay. So I, I like, I like, I'm thinking about the purple. Mm. I kind of like the idea of, and I, oh my God, <laughs> I will have to show this to Joshua because, oh my God, I am in the middle of his epic poetry book. And the only reason I paused it was because I found myself doing the normal Dory thing. I was rushing and I don't want to rush. And so I paused it. I'm like uh, about halfway. Um, and I, I just had Alice in Wonderland come into my brain looking at her and his, his epic poetry book. Um, I'm going to take a moment real quick because I don't want to misquote it. And I'm going to tell you right now, or say it on here, even though no one's watching, I really don't care because, uh, come on. Of course my computer wants to be super slow. Where is Josh? Joshua. He has a podcast called Just Joshing, and it's super cool. And I, I get to try to, I get to catch it as often as I can, and it's it's really nice. Okay, Joshua Pantelaresco. I hope I said that right. Um, so he is an author, and I am in the middle of a book. Um, of his and it the character in it is uh, it's not necessarily Alice but um, that is definitely fueling I, I'm looking at her and I'm thinking about where my head's been and thinking about the poetry the epic poetry that I'm reading and thinking about hearing him because he's writing us uh, another one um, I'll let him say more about the new the new book um, but that's, I think that has a lot to do with where this little girl came from in my head. I really can see it now. I didn't do a thing over here for a red part, but I am going to create one. It needs to have a red kind of collar or red top part to her outfit. I'm just saying. That was just, you know, wasn't planned, but now she's going to have one. Because I'm going to go back. Uh -huh. No. Yes. <laughs> Someone's watching. Hi, Tina. I was three to four up to 12 when I was abused. Yeah. I, I have different ages that different things by different people were done to me. And um, there is a way to work on that pain. I've been doing that for a long time. A lot of recovery, a lot of trauma-based program recovery. Um, and this, this, you know, I was talking about this last night about how my art and doing my art has a lot to do with keeping me sane. You know, it's one of the reasons why part of this project is the coloring book. So that was another thing I did last night. Oh, I was going to show you guys that. Um, I did uh, one of the 
pieces from my arts, my former pieces, is called Safe Haven, actually. Speaking of that, Safe Haven is a poem and, a, and an art piece I did. And they were, the poem and the piece of art were both done um, for Leslie, my best friend. Um, and it, it basically talks about having a woman in your life, a female friend, a mom, maybe a sister, someone who with them, whether you're in person or you're in conversation with them or whatever you are with that woman, they're a safe haven for you. Um, I hope anyone out there who may be a survivor of any kind of trauma or abuse um, has a safe haven in your life. Have someone who is a safe haven because that has been really super important for me. She isn't my only safe haven. Um, she may be who I refer to as my best friend because she is the woman in the world that I'm the closest to. Um, but, you know, I have a mentor who is a safe haven. I have a mentee who is a safe haven. I have godsons who I would consider safe havens. I have brothers in recovery, fellows in the recovery programs that I know for a fact. I know for a fact if I if something went down and and I needed to call a man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All I can say is that I hope no one ever really actually harms me for real now because um I mean, I would hope that none of my brothers would get a would go to jail over me. I would hope that they wouldn't, but I know a few that would probably be tempted, and they're the kind of guys that would probably uh, have a hard time keeping themselves from <laughs> going, doing something they shouldn't do. Um, you know, <sighs> there. What's really cool? What's really cool is when you. <sighs> When you've suffered at the hands of someone with abuse or uh, whatever it may be, um, what's kind of not a consolation, there's no real consolation for it. But I will say that having found men in my life that I can call brother, men in recovery, men that I've met over the years, my godsons, um, these are men that... <laughs> They prove to me that they're not all the same. Not all men are the same. They just absolutely are not. Not everyone is like that. Not everyone's going to do that. It's just not, you know, it's not the case. There was a part of me that was so hurt and so traumatized by my childhood that I was convinced they were all the same. Um, I, I really was. And I had a hard time with that. It affected all kinds of relationships of mine with people over the years. And uh, luckily I've had men come along um, that have taught me by their own actions that they're not all alike. They really are not. And um, those men also teach me, you know, what it looks like to have a real legitimate male friend, a, a decent guy who knows how to treat a woman, who knows how to be kind, and if a man comes along in my life as a partner, a potential partner, and they're not willing to be like that, if they're not willing to be like that, kind like that, sweet like that, um, protective like that, all those things. And I'm not trying to put a lot on a guy. I mean, that, that's unfair. It's unfair to try to put on all that, all kinds of stuff on men that we put on them, unfortunately. Um, you know, but it's still, in my opinion, for me, for me, I still need someone who is strong enough to, to be in that strong role. Oh, yay. I don't know if that's still you there, Tina, but um, I, God, this whole project with this book and my other book has brought me back to a lot of my um, childhood, a lot of the things that happened to me as well as the stuff that um, was was good, you know. I've been thinking a lot about some of the a lot of the good stuff. Like the other day, I was I was talking about um, 
I was talking about the fact that my first job was at the YMCA and how when I was at the YMCA, I used this really old typesetting equipment and light boxes and all this cool stuff with um, stencil uh, templates, all these different things. Cause we, there was no such thing as, as PDFs and computer softwares and things like that. And, and it probably has a lot to do with why my art is so uh, hands-on. Um, you know, I could tell you that it's because I'm kinesthetic and it probably does have a lot to do with that, that wanting to have it in my hands thing. Um, but I also think it has a lot to do with where my foundations are, are from or where my foundation was founded in terms of artwork and what I was using or what I was doing artistically. And that has a lot to do with it. That particular job has a lot to do with it. Um, I mean, other than sketching on my notebooks and stuff like that and on paper and a few other places and things, that particular job at the YMCA was where I first really got into utilizing the creative part of my brain. Um, I mean, some of it was just dictated by uh, Holly. Holly! Holy crap! Oh my God, I'm so excited. Oh, the other day when I was on and I was talking about this, I couldn't remember her name. My boss from then, um, my boss when, when I worked there, her name was Holly. Um, oh my God. I love that my roommate gets these. Where is it at? Look, product placement. They're not sponsoring me, but there you go. <laughs> This is like the quickest, simplest, easiest way to have something to eat when I don't feel like eating yet. And I'm not going to force myself to eat a big meal when I'm not actually hungry. Um, I mean, I probably should because then I wouldn't be eating dinner at 9 o'clock at night, but whatever. I wasn't hungry when I came home. I mean, I was... And it's like, you're... You know, I have cheese in my mouth and I'm saying I'm not hungry. Well, I'm one of those people that has to eat, even if I'm not hungry, for my own reasons, for my own health reasons. Um, people that know me know why. So I have to keep up my protein and I have to make sure that I have food. I can't just go without. <laughs> it's not, that doesn't work. I'll get, I'll get sick. So, <laughs> ooh, I know what I'm gonna do there. <laughs> so, what I'm gonna do, so this one, when I'm done with her will mean that I have six completed pieces and then I'm going to do the other four. Um, I have a few conceptions of what the pieces will be and I'm going to sketch them with the blue and then um, with the blue pencil and I'll hopefully we'll, you know, be able to sketch them online with pencil and ink them and do the coloring. And, and yeah, so the, the haiku series just came to me from a lot of different places, as I mentioned before. Um, I haven't made any official like Facebook social post other than this, other than the fact that I put it in the broadcast going live. Um, I put it in the title. And so if anyone sees it, they'll know. There's enough poetry in the book this is not emotional burlesque, that taking the haikus out isn't going to make a damn bit of difference because um, the book is a collection unlike any other collection of mine. Oh, son of a bitch. It has way more in it. It's the not only more poems, um, but the poems in it are more uh, like, you know, I wouldn't say stories necessarily, but yes, quite a, quite a bit of storytelling in them. And there's a few pieces in there 
that are very, 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 very close to bio bi biographical bi <laughs> biographical. <laughs> Woo! That's so rad. There you go. Me jumbling over my words um, public in a freaking live broadcast at it. What did I, how do I say that? No fucks given. Woo hoo. Um, biogra bio oh my God. I can't, I just said it and now I can't even say it again. <sighs> Whatever. Whatever, dude. Um, I was, when I was, uh, going through some of the French words from my childhood, um, la chateau pori, pori, I can't roll my R's. Um, which I had always thought meant the poorhouse, because that's what I was told. But then when I use the translation, online translation thing, it, it you, the French word is maçon or, or a mason. Maçon, I think, is how it's pronounced. I had a friend named Mason who later changed the pronunciation of his name with his friends, and we called him Maçon. It didn't bother me to have to say Masson as opposed to Mason. I like Masson. Masson. He was definitely more of a Masson than Mason. Um, <laughs> oh, I had to find out what how's how's he going. He was. He, we're still friends on Facebook and stuff. It took me a while to find him and reconnect with him, but he was the. Oh my God! If he watches or if anyone knows, uh, hi, hi, brother, hi. My friend Mason, um, he is the guy I went to school with and, and uh, spent quite a few years. He was my one of my very best friends. He's the one who gave me the name The Amazon Beauty. So um, my stand-up comedy stage name is all thanks to Masson Bore. Hi, Nikki Love. Um Look at you, I've got, I've got people, oh my god, what the heck just happened? <laughs> my Twitch is just blowing up. Ah! I tried to rage you, hun, but it isn't set up yet. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> oh my god. Um, well, I'm so excited I'm not alone. That's so rad. Look at all of these people. Hi, Legacy. Okay, let me make sure you give prop. Oh, okay, you got Nikki and Legacy and Kevin and Nick's Gates. Uh, Colimation. Wish we could have rated you. I wish I knew what that meant. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. You, one of you guys can tell me what that means. I hope you guys can see this. Okay, so this is this girl is uh, going to be the painting picture that goes along with a haiku about being jeweled and adorned with a crown from God, basically, is the point. It's a really simple haiku. This is looking gorgeous. Thank you, Miss Lala Rainbow. Thank you, Nix. So, oh, okay. So while everyone is here, we will take a break from her because, you know, there's not much left to do to her. And I'm going to treat you guys and show you so you don't have to go back and rewind. These are the ones I have done. <sighs> Just teasing Kev. Oh my God. This is my, I love you, brother. I love you right now. I was, I was like, I'm not alone. Okay. So this is called Sweet Girl. She um, is a piece I did earlier in the week. And this particular piece, I have her on top because she inspired the fact that I'm not going to put the haikus in my poetry collection book. I'm going to create, I've already actually created it on my Amazon author of stuff. Um, it's going to be a graphic series similar to a comic book. Um, and they're going to be bright colored, uh, gloss premium color. Um, and they're going to have the, the picture that will accompany the matching haiku. So this is Sweet Girl. And then this is my Cupid Cherub. Let me make sure, how do I get them all in there? <sighs> these, these are actually like, they're, I used to do a lot of art on paper with sketch paper. And um, I got to play in some of that medium with these. 
This one is based on a haiku about two people that live really, really, really far apart from each other and who can't be together. And so this is what came from, from my soul when I did the sketch to correspond to the haiku. This is what came from it. And look, Africa is a heart. The heart of Africa. Anybody get it? <laughs> Love the colors. Thank you. That earth. Oh my God, I need that on my wall. Oh, you're so sweet. See, okay, so get this. What's really cool, and Nick's Gates, um, I will uh, we'll have to make sure you have my Etsy because that is the kind of thing that I haven't had time to do. Um, but I love some of my software publishing, my publishing thing that I publish, I can put my art on a canvas where people can just order a canvas for like 40 bucks where it's printed on canvas. I haven't actually ordered one myself. I can't afford my own art. <laughs> it cracks me up. Thank you, Nikki. Um, this is a, a father son. I, you know, if anyone really looks at my art, they can tell I, I like the elements. I like mother earth. I like water. I like the ocean. Um, this is based on a haiku about living in the wonderment of a child and, and staying in laughter. And that's kind of the point of why I'm doing these in an old school coloring type of way with markers and, and inks instead of using paint or and and or or digitally coloring them like i tried to do that <laughs> i i could probably perfect no let me rephrase i could perfect using those softwares i'm that smart i'm that good at computers but my brain is not that kind of artist i'm not that kind of artist my hands are not that kind of artist this is this is me and so that's why i'm doing these like this so then this piece is a, uh, this is just a wispy weed type of thing. It's meant to look like it's underwater. And of course it came out a little different than what I envisioned, but I like it. And then, oh, that's, that's it. So, so going back to what you guys, you guys walked in on <laughs> is number six. So I decided to, as I men mentioned, I decided to turn these into, um, into a graphic illustrated colorful series of haiku books and i'm going to do 10 haikus per book with the matching illustrations and um the corresponding black and white sketches of these will be available as um, coloring pages i am working on a coloring book because part of what i want to give back and do whether i just give them away or whatever is, is, you know, a lot of some of the stuff I do, that drawing's very, very feminine. I don't know. Oh, Miss Lala. Thank you. D <laughs> you guys missed it. Hi, brother. Kevin's my brother. He's my favorite. And I could say my favorite brother, but he's really my only brother. <laughs> Supposedly I have a half brother, but Kevin's my brother. Um, but yeah, don't tell. He's still my favorite. So this one, oh my God, you guys missed it. She's like the third attempt at sketching her. I ruined one. Um, I turned another one into, oh, that's what you guys, this is the, is, is, this is what she looked like before I put any ink. This is the one that will actually go in my illustrated poetry collection book called This Is Not emotional burlesque. Um, I love her. Oh, thank you. And then this one, I decided to use it because I still had the pencil part. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to use her for the haiku book. And I'm going to use her for the for the poetry collection. And I'll be I'll be all set. I will be all set. I just realized we've going to make her her hair come down like this. So the for anyone who is joining that hasn't uh, you know seen me before met me before um, these all kind of started with this project I got it in my head to do for my poetry collection book um, and I got it in my head that I her eyes are so innocent thank you um, 
This is my sister who read me romance novels when I was a kid. <laughs> that would be me. That would be me. That is so funny because the other day I was on here and I was talking about spoken word po poetry. And I, there's, there are some other poets out there. There's, I am not the only romance poet out there. Um, but a lot of poetry, if you're interested in poetry or you go like I did, I would, I went looking to find poets like me and I didn't find very many. Um, if you like romance poetry, Michael Xavier is the best romance poet out there. In my opinion, he's my favorite poet, actually. Um, uh, J.M. Storm is good. He's good. I follow him. Um, Douglas Kearney is my new favorite for for knowing, for, for having a muse or having the inspiration to do the poetry out loud and, and speak it. He does a lot of spoken word out loud. And so I, I don't know that I'm going to add any. I think I'm, oh, I know what I was going to do. That's, this is this is where you guys came in. So I was adding um, the red, and then I'm going to do the purple down here. Um, so I started this project with the intention of doing these sketches, and and because the book is called "This Is Not Emotional Burlesque," I was going to keep all of the sketches in black and white sketched form. Um, because a lot of people who have seen my art, they love it and they like the colors, but then I have, there's some, you know, there's a few out there that they want to see it stay sketched, not some all really good work. You do some really pretty work. Aw, thank you. Um, what you're seeing right now is, is very different than what I've been doing these days. Um, let me see, hold on. That wall over there that's a that on the wall is an example of what you would normally see me doing paintings on on canvas um i i started using canvas a little over a year and a half ago um i taught self-taught myself how to deal with working on canvas that was a shit show <laughs> that was a whole new experience um but it was good i'm still learning i still you know i still don't know everything so I start doing these sketches thinking I'm going to do this whole book in sketch form. And I start working with the sketches and I start working with uh, trying to get the sketches the way I want them to look in the book. Um, and, and then of course I had the reason I was going to do a coloring book and the, or the reason I am going to do a coloring book. Let me rephrase that is because last year when COVID started, I work in healthcare and I had a few people approach me, um, two people actually, and two is enough. Two is enough to get me to do something. Canvas is fun. Yeah. Um, I, I sketch on my canvas before I paint. I'm still that girl. I, 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 I have a, I could probably just go straight to the canvas and paint, <laughs> but I, I can't bring myself to do it. So even when I, you know, like I like to have kind of a general outline. So I'll even sketch on the canvas before I start painting. So, so I get these sketches and they're in black and white and then I'm trying to manipulate them and I'm trying to get them to be like these illustrated looking pieces that people can have in a book or, or the coloring, you know, like if you've ever colored in a coloring book, the lines are, you know, they're, they're smooth and they're circ whatever they're, I'm sure there's a technical word for it. Um, hey sis, Miss Lala Rainbow asked about your colors. Let me go back. Uh, what's your inspiration for these? If you can say, and it's not a spoiler. Well, I love that question, Miss Lala, because my inspiration for what I'm doing right this minute is the fact that my favorite markers <laughs> that I got at Dollar General have these tips that are just like a paintbrush. And so I, I have this whole big old bag of markers over here. And then I have a whole bunch of other pens and inks and stuff. And these are the ones that I'm grabbing. That's probably not the, the like technical dramatic answer, but um, I talked about this a couple times this week. I am that girl. I'm that girl that's going to do art, but I am not going to spend 
a king's ransom to do it. You're not going to catch me at Aaron Brothers spending thousands of dollars on art supplies. I am going to go to every little Dollar Tree or 99 cent store or cheap place there is and I'm going to find what I can find to do what I need to do to accomplish what I want to accomplish. I will tell you, I've used marker on canvas. I've, I've used nail polish in one of my paintings. I wanted a red, one of my paintings, I wanted a particular shade of red and I could not fucking get it to work with anything I had in my art stuff. And I literally pulled out my nail polish bo box and I found a red I like, and that's what I used. <laughs> that's what I used. Um, I did use orange for the hair uh, because this, when I get into the digital stuff, the app will, I this will probably come out more brown or appear like brown. Um, if I want blonde hair, I'll use a yellow highlighter. It's a trip. You remind me of a high school art teacher I used to have. Oh, um, that's so cool. Like I never actually took art um, as I never, well, I guess I should say I have in the, in the unofficial capacity in sense of things like I, so this one, I think I'm, I'm done with this, but I've got, uh, where am I on? Where am I at on time? Oh, I'm right at an hour. So I have, um, I have this other one that, nope, that's not it. I want to show you guys because my brother's on here and um, I want to show this one to you guys because this one is a piece. Let me put this on here. This is a piece uh, that is going to accompany. Uh, it accompanies a poem called Dead and Gone. And the poem is about how if you're a writer and you're or a poet or whatever you may do, even if you're a painter, it doesn't really matter. If you, whatever you do, whatever you do, when you die, the love you put into it or, or the expression of it, the piece of it, the words of it, the actual art, whatever it is, the book, it doesn't die. I, I mean, this physical body of mine's going to die, but I, I'm not going anywhere, you know? Um, and so the, the poem is called dead and gone. And this piece, I did this piece, brother, I did this piece because it reminded me of the mausoleum, like above ground kind of way that people are buried in Louisiana. Now in this particular depiction, I do have some headstones with graves that are under my, my pipes live on. <laughs> yeah, man, you know. It's, I, I, you know, this joke about laying pipe just came to mind. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the poem dead and gone, it, I actually wrote it last year because I had gotten this really morbid, I'm going to put some ink to this. I had gotten this really morbid fascination with what the fuck was I going to do with all these paintings that I have that nobody wants, that nobody has bought. And they're just sitting here in my room. And I was so mad that, that I had all this artwork, right? And that, and of course I do what I do. I wrote that poem. And then I, I reminded myself that a lot of the art I have, I do for my own satisfaction. I do it for my own benefit. I do it for my own joy. Um, this is like my own version of art therapy class and I don't have to go to an, an, an insane asylum. Um, that is okay. Let me make sure I don't miss any of my comments. You remind me. Okay. That is definitely creativity is finest using all mediums available and thinking outside the box. Absolutely. Nikki. I, ah, oh, look at what I did. <laughs> I have the, I got to probably turn that ceiling fan off. Um, Bob Ross would call that a happy mistake. So yeah, I talked about, so when I was online yesterday, uh, I called my broadcast yesterday. Anyone, can paint. You are no longer special. Um, and the reason I called it that was because um, I knew a man who passed away this year. And in one of his songs, the line says, anyone can rap. You are no longer special. And he was referring to the fact that anyone can be a rap rapper. Anybody could rap. Now, I don't know. I'm not going to go try to be a rap person, but um, 
it made me think about it. It made me think about the fact that anyone, anyone sitting there, sitting anywhere. Um, logos or emojis. Yeah, legacy. I need the time and I need money. I got, I got, <laughs> yeah. Have I, yeah. I actually have some of that stuff. Um, I will tell you, anyone who's listening, I have no intention of doing art as a job. I, I, I have no, I wouldn't do it. If someone called me tomorrow and said, I will hire you to work every day, all day for this amount, for the same amount I make at my job job, I would probably turn it down because I have no interest in artwork as a job. However, yes, I have definitely taken my art when I have time, when I have time, time is really the answer. It's really not about money legacy. It's really about time. When I have time, um, I have an Etsy shop. I have shirts on there. Uh, one of my favorite things on there is a skirt that I have that has my piece Roar on it. Um, I actually bought the skirt and it's one of the pieces I actually have in my, my closet. I've worn it many times. Um, another one I have on there is a clock. That's really cool. Um, that world one I did, I think I'm going to do, um, I think I'm going to design a clock with it as well because, um, it's circular and the clocks that I like the ones on my page, on my shop. Um, and like I said before, I mean, I can't really afford even buying my own stuff, but I do go on there when I can and create stuff. Um, I use my print on demand stuff to, to make stuff that people can order and buy. Um, I think in my whole time having my Etsy shop, I've sold like three or four things. <laughs> um, yeah. I didn't even start. The other thing I, and, and Kevin may know this already, but I didn't even, I wouldn't. Fuck. Hold on. That is going to irritate me. No, wrong one. Okay. I turned that dang fan down. Okay. Um, until six years ago, I wouldn't let people look at my art. Go. Yeah. I have links. Uh, the best thing to find of anything is my link tree. There's not every single thing I have out there in the world is on my link tree. Um, including my Etsy. I do have my own, uh, my own website, Doris Jones labors of love. Um, it took a long time, but I got, I got, I'm not an expert, but I'm pretty good with metadata when it comes to putting metadata where it needs to go. Um, if you type in Doris Jones labors of love in Google, I'm like the first three, two to three pages of results. <laughs> and it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so basically what you guys are all getting to experience is the culmination of six years of work uh, towards being brave enough to do this, courageous enough to do this, um, or not to do it, but to show it to people, to let people in and to let people see it. Um, I had a, a, you know, I'm not alone in this, I'm not unique. Um, and, and my brother, I don't need to even give details, but you know, I had a pretty traumatic childhood. And so I don't talk about, I don't talk about my past. I rarely talk about it. And if I do, I'm not talking about it publicly. Um, and so a lot of my art, it was expressions of that stuff, especially the poetry. And so that's one of the reasons why I wouldn't show it to people because it was like, you might as well have been asking me to masturbate with you. <laughs> That's how personal this was to me. That's how personal this is to me. Um, and so it's taken me a long time to allow that exposure and that vulnerability to let people see it and, and enjoy it and, and let people in. Um, so that's why I started when I started this whole project. Um, if it weren't for a few of the artists that I started following, like Christy Shen. Okay, so for those of you on, um, one of my favorite people I follow is Christy Shen. She actually is an illustrator 
for a comic called um, Demon Bitch. And it's, it's hysterical and it's, it's, it can get raunchy. It can get very politically incorrect, but I love her comic strip. Um, let's see what we got going here. Thanks for including my link in there, Nikki. Um, thank you. Kevin the Plumber, you got to get together with Doris and get her set up on Twitch when you two have the time. <laughs> I I have a Twitch. Uh, what the, I don't, you know, what I go live on there. Um, I always pick Twitch as one of my places to go live because I, I, you know, mostly, mostly because I do have my talk shows premiering on Sunday, by the way. Uh <laughs> Just, you know, because one medium or one form of art, you know, that's not enough for me. I'm the stand-up comic that also does poetry, that's also a painter. Oh, and by the way, I also have my own talk show. <laughs> and so uh, Sunday is my, is my premiere of my second season. It's called, uh, I rebranded it, and uh, it's called Spotlights with Doris Jones, Labors of Love. And the woman that my entire lineup this year, all five of my guests, no offense any, to any men, my brother included, but all of my guests this year are women. Girl power. <laughs> and um, so Christy Shen is one of the ones uh, she does. She'll go live and she goes live on Twitch. She's on Twitch. Um, she goes live and she, she will illustrate she's a she does her illustrations digitally and i just sit in awe of her i just sit in so much just just awe of her skill and what she can accomplish in an hour because she goes on for an hour at lunch you know this i grew up with women that's right brother hmm brother did you tell them who taught you how to make sure to bring a woman flowers <laughs> um make sure you give a girl flowers give her flowers just because you don't need a reason you don't need to make her mad just bring her a f dang flower and yeah it's so funny too because i don't i don't get necessarily uh i don't i don't know people that meet me they don't they don't think of me as um as a feminine submissive type that would like flowers. I usually get the opposite reaction and it's probably cause I'm 5'10". Um, I am the tallest of the girls. Kevin is the tallest of all. Um, okay, so let me tell you this funny story about my brother. So when we were kids, Kevin, me and uh, our cousins, Felix and Joe, we would rough house in the yard and I was a tomboy and I'm five years older than Kevin. Um, I think I want to say I'm maybe five years older than Felix and Joe. I can't remember if they were in the same age. I think you guys were all around the same age. Um, and I, I used to beat the holy mech and heck out of them. <laughs> all three. I would take them all on. Yeah. I was that girl. And so, you know, we all grow up and we all get older. I moved to California. Um, and one of the Christmases or holidays or something, I go home to visit. I think it was the first time I went home to visit. And I don't remember where we were. I don't remember what we were doing. But I do know that I was standing next to Joe, Felix, and Kevin. Um me either. I'm the knight in shining armor who likes to be treated like a princess sometimes. Yeah, you bet. That is all me. I'm I'm 100% submissive princess sweet girl. Um, until I'm not. <laughs> and if I'm not being sweet with you, you were probably an asshole and you probably deserved it. Um, so I'm standing there as an adult year, you know, years later, right? I'm standing there with my brother and my cousins joe and felix and i'm like this tiny little 5'10 standing with all these three men and they're all over six foot kevin can can tell you what their all their heights are and i was terrified like i had this wave of of actual terror come over me and and i had this thought this was the thought i'm on now would be a really bad time for them to decide to gang up on me and and give me retribution for all of the the heck I played on them when we were kids. 
Because <laughs> they would have really killed me. <laughs> like, they could legit have killed me. Because <laughs> I, like, and I, I mean, that was probably even back when I was a bigger girl. Um, I used to weigh a lot. My heaviest was 380 pounds. And I don't weigh 380 anymore. Thank God. I've kept that off for 15 years. Um, and what is it? It's almost like it's 8 o'clock, brother. In four hours, I will have 10 years clean and sober. Um, I'm so excited by that. That just trips me out. Technically, technically, I have 10 years right now at this moment. Thank you, girls. Um, I don't know if Legacy is a man or a girl. Wait, yeah, it's a girl in the picture, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm like terrible at this stuff. Um, so yeah, so technically, actually right now, at this moment while I'm speaking to you guys, I was 10 years ago on the 10th of June, I was sitting in an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting, my very first meeting. I was sitting in the very first meeting I ever went to in my entire life 10 years ago tonight at this moment. It was a meeting that started at 6.30 and it ended at 7.30 and I haven't had a drink or a drug since. Now I've had a lot of fucked up other things I did in my life, <laughs> even stone cold sober. You know, you can actually fuck some shit up stone cold sober. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm laughing way too hard at that one. Thank God, though. Thank God. Uh, you know, there's there's solutions for even that. There's solutions for for you know messing up life. Um. So yeah. <sighs> so these. Oh my God. So the other reason I wanted to pull this one out while you guys were all on here is you know in honor of my brother. When I did this piece. I put a fish in the middle because, you know, I think of Louisiana and my head goes to water and it goes to trawling and it goes to shrimp boats and it goes to those beautiful bridges that we, you know, I grew up not, I mean, like, man, when I think about some of the gorgeousness of the landscape in Louisiana, um, there's not very many things that get me homesick. Um, the food always gets me homesick. The scenery always gets me homesick. And my brother. You make me very homesick, brother. Um, I'm going to try not to cry. Of course I'm going to. The other night when I cried while I was live, um, I actually had tears fall on my paper. And I'm working with ink, so that would probably not be a good idea right now. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to not look up for a minute. And <laughs> I love you, brother. I love you so much. Um, I felt so alone in this world until I was five. And the reason I say that is because um, I love my two older sisters. I do. I do. I, I, I do love my older sisters. But I'm a tomboy. I'm a, I'm a tomboy. I, I'm not a girly girl. Uh, I am, okay, that contradicts what I said earlier. I am that princess that wants to be treated like a princess, but I had to learn how to be feminine. I, I, did, I didn't, I mean, I was feminine the whole time, but I had to learn how to let myself, let people see that. Um, when you're, when you go through the kind of things that we went through as kids, I learned really quick to not let anyone see that vulnerable, young, sweet, soft girl. I used to hide her behind a badass. I used to hide her behind nicknames that I had, like the Amazon Beauty, which is my comedy name, or my softball name was Dozer. I was nicknamed Dozer because that was short for Bulldozer. So those are the kind of perceptions I wanted people to think of me. I wanted them to be scared of me. I wanted them to feel like I was going to kick their ass because it, it, I didn't. The alternative, I, the alternative was that if they thought I was weak, they thought. I, I thought that they would then know that they could fuck with me. And I was, I was done being abused. I was done having people do shit to me. Um, so anyway, as I got older, I had to learn how to be feminine. I had to learn how to be sweet and allow that femininity to come out. Um, I 
totally lost my train of thought and I can't even remember why I was going down that rabbit hole. Oh, I know why. Because I said my I, I felt alone for those first five years because I was this tomboy. I was only five, but I still felt alone because even though I had these two older sisters, they were like peas in, peas in a pod and they were always like together. And I was like this third wheel out. And at five years old, my brother was born. <laughs> And the minute, the minute I had a little brother in the world, you know, no offense to my older sisters, but as far as I was concerned, my, my, that was when life started for me. <laughs> that was when life began. <laughs> was Kevin's here. Bye girls. Leave me the fuck alone. My brother's here. That was, you know, that was, that was my world. And the, it never had, it's never really faltered from that. So, um, it is why, you know, it's good that, yeah, he was, he was a man raised in a world where he had four sisters, but luckily he had a sister like me. <laughs> I was going to help him, you know, uh, do the outdoor boy stuff and get, and get dirty and all muddy and, and all that shit. But we were, you know, but he was also, I was, I, I'm pretty sure I was the first girl he ever gave a flower to. I think I'm pretty sure that kind of stuff, you know, and, uh, I do, I will say, I wish I had been older in some ways because there was one time that someone made the mistake of hurting Kevin. And luckily for us, we had a sister named Linda <laughs> because my sister name, my sister Linda took care of that shit. She, I, I've seen her at least twice beat the holy living motherfucker out of someone because they hurt one of us. Um, one time it was me. One time it was Kevin. It was Kevin. And um, yeah, I talked about Linda the other night when I was talking about some stuff from my childhood and um, yeah. Yeah there were a lot of humans i a lot of adults that i had no trust in at all when i was growing up but my sister linda yeah she was definitely someone i knew i knew for a fact that she was gonna fuck you up if you fucked with one of us <laughs> she, and she and she wasn't gonna care if she was gonna end up in jail over it she she didn't give two fucks about it you fucked with one of us you were yeah that was probably the biggest mistake you were ever gonna make and that probably has a lot to do with why I got nicknames like Dozer and the Amazon Beauty because I had I had a sister like Linda who who taught me what it looked like to defend yourself, you know, to defend yourself if you had to, or defend your family if you had to. I will say that I'd probably I don't know that I would ever want to like throw down over something someone did to me unless it's in self defense. But I definitely know that that poem the haiku I have that goes with that piece called sweet girl. It's about that very thing. The haiku is sweet girl. I am. Yes. Don't underestimate me. Cut a bitch. I will. That's the haiku. Um, and so it's, it's basically exactly what we're talking about. It's, it's talking about that, the, that way that yes, we are all, we all have that sweetness about us that we, you know, from our childhood before the world fucked with us. Um, one of my poems is called listen little sis and it's about the inner child. Um, and it's about how as adults, and this is one of the things I learned in recovery as adults, it's my job. It's my job to protect the inner child I have in here. Because even though I'm 51 years old, that little girl is still in there. She's still there. And if I allow someone to fuck with me now, it's the, it, it's the same level of trauma to the center of the soul. And you don't have to believe me if you don't want to. But um, one of the reasons why, as an adult, we need to protect our inner child is because it's the same kind of trauma that would have what a, a little child would, in, would incur. Even though I'm 51, there's still that little child in there that would incur and feel it. And so it's up to me to protect her even today. Um, it's one of the, probably it's one of the biggest reasons I've been single for so long. And the last time I allowed a man in my space um, to get close to me, 
he died. So, you know, I'll be single for again for a while. <laughs> That's okay. Mm. This one, I, I doubt I'll add any color to it because this one's going to be in the, um, the poetry collection as opposed to the haiku book. And um, I won't know until I'm done with this part of the process. And then I will go over to, uh, I'll take a picture because I have been taking them once they're in black, like when this, when this is done and I've been online for almost an hour and a half. Oh my God, you guys, how long, Hey brother, how long's normal for like a live feed um, Twitch thing? Like how long do you guys go live? I usually try to stick, keep mine to an hour. I mean, I could sit here and do this for hours and hours, but I don't know about being on live that whole line, that whole time. I scream for four, <laughs> however long you want. You guys are cool. You guys are so rad. I am so like newbie, dork, geeky girl at all of this stuff. Like, I'm like, well, I don't know. I don't know how to do that or this or this or that. That's so funny when she's, when you guys said I was trying to raid you. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> it's so funny. Like the addict crazy girl in me wants to be like, raid? No, what are we going to do for this raid? <laughs> Your birthday was six hours. Oh, how did I miss that? Wait, what day was, I sent you a happy birthday text and I don't know, and for your, all your support, Aww. love sent you. You guys are so sweet. Six hours. I must've been at work. June 3rd. What day of the week was June 3rd? Might have been with the boys because there's very few times I'm not online and uh, Tuesday, this Tuesday, last Tuesday. Where the fuck was I last Tuesday? I know I was working during the day. Was it during the day? Probably. I was, uh, swept away by some stupid boy recently who broke my heart another guy yet again because i you know i'm a sucker for love and <laughs> i was emotional thursday ah i had the boys last thursday that's probably why i missed you somehow i was cooking i was prepping for them to be over here that kind of stuff i'm not that is probably, like I said, this is like really the only time I'm not going to have my phone going or my computer on or whatever is if I've got the kids at, I mean, that's pretty much it. Otherwise I'm, even if I'm at my day job, um, I can totally like today I was in when, um, Nikki was live, I was doing spreadsheet stuff. I lost my train of thought. Um, I was thinking about, so I don't, I can't remember the horror game that she was playing, but I was thinking about when we were kids and I like playing games, but I like watching more than I like playing. And it's one of the reasons why Soma. Yeah. I like the game you play Kev. Um, I, I'm definitely, definitely dig watching people play. What the hair, man? I, I'm not putting it up, okay? I'm not, I just washed it and I'm, I'm telling myself I'm not putting it in the hair tie until I can uh, flat iron it. Because if I put it in a hair tie right now, it's just gonna break. It's just gonna break. And so, I'm not doing that. So, I'm just gonna, anyway. But yeah, I like watching them. I like watching other people play them. It's almost as if, it's kind of like a movie. It's like watching a movie. Not exactly like watching a movie, but it kind of is. It's kind of cool, you know? 
And then um, it's been fun trying new games. That's rad. Me too. I would rather watch. Um, but Nikki, wasn't it you that was playing Selma? I have this right. Please tell me I'm not getting you confused with someone else. <laughs> I will be. I will be so embarrassed. Um, I. Uh, I think I mentioned this one of the other times I was on. I the only video games that ever really got me hooked was the first Mario, Resident Evil, Mission Command. I'm that old. Mission Control or Mission, yeah, Mission Control maybe. I think, or nope, Mission Command. I'm pretty sure it's called Mission Command. Um, everyone else was all into Asteroids, but no, no, no. I wanted Mission Command. And um, I love that fucking game. Couldn't really stand Asteroids, actually. Um... It was me. Okay, good. <laughs> oh my God. I, it's so cool. So I work where I work is about 45, 50 minutes away down in old town and, um, somewhere around La Mesa or Lakeside or some shit, my phone decided to stop with reception, especially when I get to this one part of the 67 that's coming up to Ramona it's mountains. There's no reception. And so I had to just basically, I sit in silence for about half an hour of my, of my drive home was the point. And then I got home and I, I needed to take a shower and I needed to get settled and, and then I just didn't go back on. So I probably missed some more of the last part of your stuff. Um, but it's cool. I, I was, you know, this whole world since COVID started last year, I started, sitting back and watching live feeds when I could, when I could, because it made me feel less alone. And I'm not the type that gets really lonely per se, because I like being alone. I'm a loner. Um, however, this is kind of like, it's my way of socializing because <laughs> I can't stand going outside to see people. I'm not an agoraphobic person, but oh my God still people i don't want to go around people i want to be around people same my brother says same yeah i like just doing my own thing in my own space however you know i have to admit i have to admit and own the fact that this last year though it kind of pushed me to the limit like yeah i usually normally am like that for sure where i can just be on my own by myself and i'm good but this last year was like it was almost too much it was too much alone time it was like, okay, I need people. I need some people. Um, and so I did, um, I found myself wanting to see people or talk to people. And that's where online feeds, doing what you guys are doing, you know, yeah, things are opening back up and stuff, but I think it's going to be cool. There's so many things we do online now that we, we do because of it that I think it, you know, I'm not glad that it happened, but it definitely had some benefits that came out of it, you know? Um, like I was telling, I was telling someone just not too long ago about how the fact that I self publish all my stuff is perfectly fine by me. And I don't even try to go find a publisher. I, I, I've never even, I, well, okay, that's not true. I've submitted here and there things happen. I see something, I see maybe a contest or a something and I'll submit something. Um, I did have a gallery say that if it weren't for the fact that they, it was a, like an artist gallery of artist members and they, it was like a consortium or something. And, um, their website didn't say they were full, unfortunately. And it, it told you how to apply to be an artist in their group. Um, and I, I applied and I sent in all the stuff and I sent in the examples and, and I got this letter back from them. It was very cool. It was very, very, very cool because it, they apologized that their website didn't make it clear that they had no room or space for any more artists in their little thing. Um, but she also made it clear that I would have been accepted had they had room. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Um, that was nice. That was a really nice Thing, even though I didn't get in and that's okay. You know, it just means my art hangs on my wall <laughs> unsold as opposed to art in an art gallery unsold. 
<laughs> Thank you, Nikki. Even in the horrible things that happened this past year, good things came from it. I have met amazing people I never would have had any other way, right? So true. So the, um, the lineup for my talk show that I'm doing is actually uh, five women because I do five episodes. They're an hour or so long. And I interview artists of any genre. Um, Spotlights, is, it's intended to be anyone out there, creator, artist, musician. And um, my uh, friend who died, Van Bates, I told Kevin about him. He was a local uh, musician. He had been doing music since he was, God, probably old enough to talk. And um, four of the women in this lineup are women that I wouldn't have known if it weren't for, um, for Van. And actually, technically, I wouldn't have known Van if it weren't for my friend Spike. I wouldn't have even known who Van was. Um, Spike was on my show last year. And Spike is the one who suggested Van. And then through the course of meeting Van, um, actually Spike had request or Spike had suggested two of the girls on the list as well. Um, Christy Shen is one I found because of Spike. Um, what I didn't know, but I know now is that he, oh my God, there's so many people I know now. <laughs> so many people I know now because of that. So I'm, I'm basically done with that, um, with the dark parts. And um, I won't do much else to it until I do the picture and some of the software stuff I do with them. And then, because what I've learned is that after I take the picture and I pull back, and this is what I have to do for me. I think every artist is probably different. I have to sit on it. You know, kind of like those pieces I showed you guys that I added color to. They originally didn't have color. I wasn't going to put color. But after I put color to one, I was like, whoop, <laughs> here we go. Um, so, yeah. So, next time I go live, which will probably be tomorrow. Oh, uh, maybe. Tomorrow I have a, an event to go to at 8 o'clock. I may not be. This is another one that I have coming up that I need to, that I'm going to add ink I'm going to black this one. Um, this one I did black to her. Oh, yeah, Kevin. I, she is actually either going to be on the title page in the book called This Is Not Emotional Burlesque. She is um, a take on a burlesque -ish thing because she's wearing, you know, she's still in lingerie. Um, but she's also got a Mardi Gras mask which again, a lot of the artwork I've done for this particular collection that's coming out of me is very, it's, it's, it wasn't intended to turn out like that, but a lot of my French, a lot of that Cajun French stuff from my childhood is coming out of me. So she's, in, she's going to be in the, I know she'll be in the book. Um, she'll either be the cover or she'll be in the book. This is a piece I did as practice. Now, technically um, I did trace part of this because I wanted to get used to the form, um, particularly this visual, because this side of the girl is what I recreated here without tracing. Um, but I did this one as practice. Thanks, brother. Um, and this is the, you know, it was actually a photograph, a really old photograph, Kevin, of a, a I googled like burlesque or something and this was a really old black and white photo of a burlesque dancer in front of a mirror this this thing in the middle is a mirror and and technically in the photograph it's the same girl looking at herself in the mirror or looking off to the side um when i did mine of course as my as my friend pointed out to me being an abstract realist realism person I take real life and I turn it into an abstract. Um, this is a piece that I am basically done with. This one I might actually convert to be for the haiku book and, and use color with it because I think I want to keep like the one, like this I'll probably leave in just black in the sketched. But then some of the ones like this, haha, ha, I wish, looks like Nikki. <laughs> um, 
your creativity flows so naturally. Thank you. Um, when I was on the other the other night, I was thinking about part of this whole process. Part of this whole process was that I hadn't realized how some of the stuff I was literally forcing myself to go out of what what I would do, what I would do. And that was what kind of I hit this wall. And that's why I had the meltdown I had Monday night. Um, and um, I had to do I had to remind myself that, no, I don't I don't do art with rules. Part of why I do abstract kind of takes on stuff. And um, oh, I know what I was going to show you guys. I remember now since I oh, please don't tell me I have to get up. <laughs> So one of the one of the many myriads of projects I have is a coloring book, and um, I am taking the pieces of of artwork from years past that are in color, tons of color, and I didn't used to take my I didn't take pictures of anything. I wouldn't take pictures of anything until it was done. <laughs> that's what I used to do and I so I decide I get it in my head that I'm going to do a coloring book well that's you can't really do that if you don't have a picture of it like this if you don't have a picture of it like this yeah okay you probably could take take a big old whatever and get take all the color out if you're really snazzy with digital photography or digital programs like photoshop and stuff well I'm not I'm so not I can't stand it so I decided as I'm going through this process, oh, that I'm going, I'm just going to have to redo lined ink versions of my artwork. This is a, this is a piece that uh, I was mentioning earlier when I was talking about the poem Safe Haven. This is the accompanying art piece that goes with it. It's a mama elephant and her two twins. Elephants are uh, one of those animals that have twins a lot. And um, so this, I inked this the other day. So this is ready for the coloring book. Um, this is a piece called Surrender that I inked. She's ready for the comic book. She's so pretty. Now she's the one, I think when I originally was on painting and brother, uh, and I met you guys um, and my brother came on, I was doing a painted version of this one. I want this coloring book. You, you bet, Nikki. Trust me. I've only, <laughs> um, I have a hundred in. So my art book, my actual art book, it's like a, um, it, it's basically like a coffee table book, but it's paperback. This is all my art. It's a hundred and one pieces of art. It's basically like two decades of stuff that I had, that I did, that I fought, that I went through. And so that's the book. It's on my Amazon. So this book is the one I'm recreating. Now, I may do a series of coloring books similar to the haiku thing, because I think what would be fun, rather than waiting until I have 101 of these done, I think it would be fun to release a series of these volumes of these, um, you know, and I, for these, I'll probably use the same size, which is the eight and a half, the full eight and a half by 11. So that if someone wants it, they can take it, even maybe cut the page out and paint it. You know, it's on shit, man. I used to do some of my art on regular fucking copy paper. So this is a piece that was, <laughs> I like to tell people, this was my first commissioned piece. <laughs> But technically, this was the one first piece anyone had ever asked me to specifically do something specific. And it was my oldest son, of all people. Um, it, so this was like six, no. Yeah, about six years ago, maybe seven years ago, he asked me for a Medusa. He said, Mom, I want a Medusa. So I did a Medusa for him. The original of this, I still have. I still have this um, because Kevin, uh, Kev, not Kevin, that's my brother, my oldest boy, Trevor. See, I say, you know, Trevor and Kevin, yeah, Trevor reminds me of Kevin so much. Um, they look so much alike. 
but then that's you know a, that's the other thing i don't know if kevin has said me and kevin are the two that looked alike in a just well melissa looks like me and melissa and kevin look like all the same person in a lot of different ways melissa's the mini me she's the mini version of me this is roar um she is a the very um one of the first pieces of mine that ever sold she is katie perry actually um she's a depiction of a picture of katie i found that i loved the original painting that i don't have it was sold um i did her face in full white like a geisha girl and so the cool thing about this and this is what came to me when i decided to you know okay painstakingly take the time to do one of these right to do take one of my i bought a light board the boards where you get the light coming through um which one is it i think it's the ones with the no the elephant one is very similar but as i'm doing these i'm finding myself adjusting a few things in it not adjusting but different like this hair is a little different than the painting this her tail is a little different um her hair again a little different so what's cool about this experience oh like the same thing in this one her nails are different i did her eyes very different they're different in the painting and i love that it, and it, it, you know for you guys that are still here with me thank you so much i love that i love when it's different because i was talking about this last night i couldn't do the kind of artwork that where someone's drawing the same thing every day <laughs> i couldn't be that artist that wouldn't work for me i get way too easily bored it's why i have so many mediums that i use it's why i go all over the place with everything i do it's why i don't just uh, paint or just sketch or just write poetry or just whatever um van bates who was known as black hesher the man who died this year, he was the one who said to me, cause I was telling him that I wanted to find, um, I wanted to find someone. I am. I forget that um, because of the camera situation. You did. <laughs> I fucked it up, you guys. Someone who knows stranger. Okay, I don't know how to get it to do that. I don't know how to get it to have two audio devices next to each other and not fucking do that like even though even if i take one even if i take one and mute everything turn it off to what i think is turned off it's not something's not getting turned off um so screech sorry brother um i'll figure it out i i you know i have to use this camera this one to show the art because it's the only one that can adjust facing down so <laughs> turn down the radio it has something i'm sure it has something to do with the speaker in addition to the mic turning them both off is something i don't know 
Um, but even if I turn the mic off and turn like the volumes down, for some reason it gets this cross connect. Um, so, so yeah, so wow, I have been on for almost two hours. Um, I could probably, what is it, 8.30? I probably could draw for another couple hours or so, but um, I think I'm done for the moment. <laughs> I find that if I try to do too much in, in, at one, at, in one setting or one setting, I get lazy and uh, not a good idea. Sometimes it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter depending on what I'm doing. Um, but that's it. Yeah. So I'm done for the day and I'm super, super excited. You guys joined me. Thank you so much for being here. I hope I, uh, didn't miss any comments that, that anybody had of anything they said or question. If I, I hope I don't, I hope I didn't miss anything. Um, it's, it was, you know, to, I'll tell you, and you guys that do this can probably relate. Like it's one thing when you're like, you're sitting here and you maybe have one person, maybe two, um, you know, I'm always sitting in there going, I wish there was more people. And then all of a sudden there's all these people and I'm like, okay, now I want to keep up with what they're saying to me. And I want to make sure that it, they know that I know that they're there because, um, being someone who likes watching live feeds, you know, I've gotten accustomed to, um, being really sure that they know that I'm there and that I'm listening. And, you know, because when I'm live, I, I, again, I just, I don't need affirmation from people, but I definitely, definitely would like to know, oh, hey, hi, you know, like, hey, I'm here. Um, it takes some getting used to. Yeah, I bet it does, brother. Like, you know, I, I'll share this and then I'll, I'll wrap it up. But like, if you had told me around, you know, six and a half, seven years ago that I was going to ever let people read my poetry I would publish my poetry. I would then show my art to people. I would then publish art books. And then I would like take them to, and put them together. And then, I, oh, and then if you would try to tell me that I was going to create my own spoken word music album, which dropped on Apple, by the way, Doris Faye Jones, your brother, I mean, your sister brother, Doris Faye Jones is an Apple musician, music art, well, not musician, but music artist on Apple. And I was tripping the fuck out when I pulled it up because like the album dropped on the 6th, I think. But I had to go in and claim myself as an artist. I had to, originally I had released one single using just Doris Jones because I didn't want to put in my middle name because I didn't want someone to try to steal my identity. But then I realized I got no fucking credit. They ain't going to steal shit from me. So I, I used my middle name. So this time when I released the album, the music spoken word music track album, um, there was no confusion. They didn't mix me up. The original single I had released, they mixed me up with a blues singer named Doris Jones. Um, and she goes getting credit for my po spoken word poetry. So I removed, I took that piece off. I took that piece down I sh and stuff. Your name is perfect for being an artist. Thank you. Um, yeah, I use Doris Jones labors of love as that's the technical official name of like the company label level kind of thing. Um, the Amazon beauty is my comedy name. But anyway, I can't believe, so I have to go on there. So I had to go on there and I had to claim myself as an artist and Apple approved me and I have claim of my own artist profile, which is rad. So I got to put my own picture on my artist profile and it's just, it's surreal. It's just surreal to see my face. I've never lived in Apple. I've never lived in Apple world. Okay. I've always been in the PC windows world. But I've always weird, I, a weird ironic I, irony is I've always listened to my music on an iPod or using iTunes my whole life. Like as far as long as I can remember back when we started, you know, shifting from CDs and stuff. And so all of my music's been in iTunes and I, ex I did have some music in Google music, but then Google music sold out to YouTube, I think. So anyway, I what's a CD? <laughs> you know, it's crazy about that. I went to this memorial concert for Van and I actually bought 
one of the CDs, um, one of his CDs. Uh, he, now granted, he's not here. Okay, I have to show you guys um, because he's dead. He passed away, he went home. I should put it that way. <gasps> Saying he's dead like that, it's just a little, little bit much. I don't, yeah, anyway. I forgot I had my light sitting right here. So this is his album. His, uh, his, uh, it's called Saints and Sirens. This is the one, he, this is like his fourth or fifth album, but this came out earlier this year and it is nominated. It's nominated with the San Diego. Oh, the artwork. That's what I wanted to tell you about Nikki is that Kate Krasinski, who is in my lineup for my talk show on Sundays, she is my July 11th guest she's my third she's either third or fourth in the lineup um but she did the artwork on the front her name is kate grzynski um she is the artist who did the artwork on the front and yes this is an actual cd look Woohoo! <laughs> and you know my 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 radio in my car actually has a CD player. So I, the artwork on the front is hers and this piece is sold, but she does have, I think she has something on her Etsy with this, but she has a whole bunch of other stuff on there, but this is her on the back. This is actually the artist and she autographed it. I got to see her paint in real life at the memorial. She was set up at the memorial and she painted on site while everybody was there playing music. Um, this CD is Katie LaDubs. She is the, the rap goddess of them all. Like this is the best female rap artist I've ever heard in my life. Now I might be biased because I've seen her in person, but she signed this for me at the memorial and she's my season premiere. She's the one who's opening my talk show Sunday at six or one, excuse me, one o'clock. She'll be on live Pacific time which I think for you guys is three, no, one, two, three, four. Is it three hour difference? Louisiana. No, it's not three, it's two. What's the time difference there? What time is this? I'm like, oh my God, it'll be one o'clock. She'll be on live with me Sunday at one. Katie LaDubs, that's my one, that's my Sunday. Um, and then this guy, he's not going to be on the talk show, but he's on the East coast. His name is Diastro StreamYard. This tab is using your camera. I hope I didn't go nice for Kevin two hours. I'm Pacific. Oh, hi, Nikki. So one o'clock for you. Um, so yeah, Katie, oh my God. You know, I, I, like I said, I, I could sound like I'm being biased because she is, you know, she's from here and I met her here and I, but I just love her. I just love her. Her album moves to make is freaking amazing. It's in, I, oh my God, there's been days where like, I am not in the greatest of mood at all or whatever. And I'll put on her CD and I'm like, right. I'm all good. Right as rain. Um, so yeah. <sighs> okay. I am good. I love you guys. I love you all. And I love you, brother. I miss you. Those are the right. Every song on her album is really good. Um, one of the songs. I, uh, Relentless, I think it is. No. Devil in my mind. She sang it at the memorial and I was, I held it together. You know, I held it together until she sang it. <laughs> And I just lost my shit because it's one of her few songs on there where she sings as opposed to raps. And um, yeah, it was, it, it was very emotional. It was very emotional. We all miss Van very much. Um, and, you know, whether you're on the East Coast or West Coast, if, I don't know, I don't know for sure. Um, can you take, type it in? Yeah. Um, I don't know for sure. Oh, look, you guys, that's my wall of art over there. Just realize, let me see if I can get this. That is the artwork I have painted. And I put it all on the wall because, um, coffee pot. Yeah, 
in my, I know this is my office. My bedroom is my office, literally. Um, so I had to put everything on the walls because I accidentally actually ruined five of those. I actually ruined five of those by carrying them. I tr was trying to carry them and I was being impatient with myself and I fell with them in my hands and literally broke through the canvas on a couple of them. Katie LaDoves. Um, there we go. Yeah. So, um, Katie, she doesn't have, she has a YouTube, um, but the best place to find her music, of course, is if you have Apple, if you're a subscriber, you'll find her there for sure. You'll find her there. Um, the other place uh, to find her music is Bandcamp. Um, my poetry album, I'm going to copy the link right now, is free on Bandcamp because, it, you know, it wasn't intentionally originally going to be intended to be that way. I was actually working on it when Van passed away, when he went home. And so what I chose to do when I got done with it was provide it to anyone as a complimentary um, piece because um, it's his spirit. I mean, that's, that's the whole spirit of him, actually. The whole spirit of Van. Uh, was to give to others and be and be of service to others and help other artists out and you know I mean who goes around looking for spoken word poetry but um, the entire entire album was either written about him one of the poem was either written about him or inspired by him they're not all biographical um, they're not all exact um, like like they're just inspired by him and three of the pieces were written after he passed away. So, oh, and while you guys are still here, and I, you know, I don't, I didn't, end, I, I don't, didn't end up talking about him, but this is, this is a painting I did of him. How do I, what's the best way? Oh, there we go. So this is the painting I did of Van. Um, and I was going to give this to him. It was going to be, a, you know, it's an eight by 10. Um, thank you, Nikki. It was, uh, I was going to be giving this to him and he passed away before I got a chance to see him to give it to him. So it'll stay on my wall. <laughs> it'll stay on my wall. So, yeah, you know what I was thinking was I wonder. go i know i bet that works i bet that's better darn technology um well it's funny because like i figured out how to do all these things but then like i got so good at turning the audio off <laughs> it's like how do i turn it back on you know i was like oh <laughs> and you know it doesn't help that okay so i'm on this laptop that has, um, I had that camera plugged into it and the laptop has two different microphones. Why it has more than one microphone, I have no idea. But when I go, when I go into the microphone settings, it, there's more than one microphone to choose. There's more than one speaker thing to choose. And I'm like, 
It's a laptop. <laughs> Why has it got so many choices? Oh, my God. All right. Well, Nikki, I think it's just you and I, maybe. So thank you for being here. Where in, um, where in California are you? Oh, you are here, brother. Hi, babe. Um, you said, you, you said, you said California Pacific Coast. What'd you say? Oh, my God. I'm such a fucking airhead. Um, Bay Area. Okay. Hi, Legacy. Um, you know, it's cool. Okay. So, StreamYard, I'm streaming to Twitch from StreamYard. And um, I don't know how many people are watching me in Twitch, but on my side of the world in StreamYard, it says one. <laughs> it says one person's watching me. So, who, who Lord knows? Oh, Legacy's in Cali, too. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, I'm in San Diego area down here, down uh, in San Diego. Um, I live in a place called Ramona. It's quite a ways actually away from downtown San Diego. Um, it's about 45, 50 minutes. It's kind of like where we grew up in Homa as opposed to New Orleans kind of thing. So, but yeah, I'm going to, um, I'm going to go have, oh, I love, Nikki said this earlier. I'm going to go have a human break and, and then I'm going to make myself another, another cup of hot tea and I'll probably put on a romance movie of some kind and yeah, and that's about it. I think I'm done for the day. I'm so excited you guys got to join me. Yay. So excited. So excited. But yeah, um, Kevin may have already told you guys, and I know it's on some of my pages, but if you want to find me anywhere else, I'm like, uh, my as my oldest kid would say, I'm a little over the top. I'm a little extra because I have three Instagrams, three Twitters, one Twitch. I have one Twitch. I, I've got that down to one. Um, five face, or no, I have uh, a personal Facebook page, three business type Facebook pages, um, a Facebook page I maintain for a fellowship group. I have like five fellowship group related pages that I ma maintain and manage and admin. Then I have, to, oh, I have three TikToks. You know, I have a Snapchat. I have a Pinterest. I have a Patreon. I mean, like on and on and on, right? And my 18 year old, I'm 51. And my 18 year old is looking at me and he's like, okay, mom, <laughs> you're extra. He called me extra. <laughs> but it is why, it is why, thank God for Linktree. Thank God for Linktree. That's like a godsend. You just send everyone to your Linktree and they can literally find whatever platform they like using. Now I'm at the, but I am at the point now, you are busy, right? And um, I'm at the point now where someone talks about a new platform of some kind and I'm like, yeah, I'm out. I'm tapped out. <laughs> it better, like, you better really tell me it's going to give me something for me to want to go on it because I'm on everything all over the place. Um, and the only reason I have so many is because I use, I, I try to compartmentalize stuff because my stand up comedy will completely confuse people if they try to follow me that way. And if I put poetry, love stuff or trauma stuff or recovery stuff on my comedy page, that makes no sense. So then I have, so I have my comedy pages. So each one has a comedy thing related to the comedy. And then I have one related to Doris Jones labors of love, which is for the art and the poetry. And then I have diva daily living which is, it's, it's kind of cool because she, I get followed and I was almost going to talk about Diva Dory as a separate person, but it's still me. I'm Diva Dory. Um, but I use Diva Daily Living to reach my mint, reach my survivors, to reach my uh, people that have survived abuse or rape or trauma or all kinds of things. That's what I utilize Diva Dory for. Um, I, I'll tell you in a platform like in this setting what that page is for. Um, I'm not always explicit about it because I'm all inclusive. I don't, you don't even have to have been a survivor of anything to follow me there. Um, I just, it's about providing back and giving back to people. 
and it's um it's just a page i created ages ago for that purpose and i keep it up so so yeah so that's why i have like a, you know a different entity <laughs> I have multi personalities. <laughs> this is like my artwork. I don't know. Who are you talking to today? Would you like to talk to Diva Dory or would you like to talk to the stand up comic? There is a reason why I'm supposed to meet you. Every time you say something about yourself, it makes me like you all. Oh, legacy. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's it, and the irony about having so many different compartmentalized pages for these different aspects of different things I do. One of the ironies is that I don't like titles and definitions and identity stuff. Like I'm not, I'm not going to give myself a definition. Um, I don't pick a side. I don't pick color. I don't pick a, you know what I mean? Like I don't have an affiliation. I don't have a denomination. I like, you know, um, all, all, <laughs> love all, love all. Love is my language. Love is my religion. Love is my politics. You know, you name it, you name it. It works for me. <sighs> well, I am definitely going to need to run to the little lady's room and I thank you all again and um, please feel free to friend me, follow me, send me, make sure I'm following you back. Definitely make sure I know where to follow you back. Um, you know, I want to make sure to to pay homage and return the, the, the gifts. Um, we will see you next time. I love you, brother. Um, you guys, thanks to you guys. You got me to stay on here for another hour. So the, whoever might watch this later or just for you guys who were here with me, check us out. Finally able to talk, had to shower. Hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you, Legacy. Um, and thank you again. And I'm I'm super excited. I hope I get, I hope I don't miss any of your guys' shows going forward. I, I, I know I've got a lot going on and I do work a day job. But as I was saying, like, I love having you guys on in the background. I may not always get to reply, but, and I'm not normally having to drive back and forth because, you know, but. So anyway, okay, I'm going to officially hit end broadcast. It feels like, a, you know, what? okay, I'm not, e I'm not even going to try to apologize for how long it's taken me to go offline, considering the fact that I am from the South and, you know, we have to say we're leaving a party like an hour before we actually intend to leave. Like we have to start saying goodbye because <laughs> it's going to take us about an hour to actually get out the door. <laughs> right, brother? Oh my God. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we, we won't get out of here in and out. We could be able to start saying bye now. <laughs> oh my God. And real quick, I promise I will let you guys go. Brother, I there's a couple of my spoken word poems I've got to do uh, the audio for, but I'm going to have to call you and talk to you for like a half hour or so before I record it so that my accent comes back. <laughs> Because I want my I want my down the bayou Cajun girl voice, and I try I try to get the accent to come back and do one of my poems in the accent, and I just end up sounding Mexican. I can't do it. I need I'm gonna need you, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna need to have a conversation with you first, and then it'll be like, or or, you know, maybe I'll just have to make my stupid ass or make my fucking lazy ass come home and visit and record them while I'm there record the vocals while I'm there because you know 24 hours 24 hours after the plane would hit NOLA uh, yeah <laughs> I would sound just like I did growing up I almost it's almost here just just talking about it lazy draw that's right Okay. Okay. Now that the tears are coming down, I really wish we'll say goodbye. Mwah.